like a Japanese anime game type of a deal and um, you know we were young you know we were definitely young and um, you know I was 18 it was like 17 yeah and um, my sister actually signed me up for it and I didn't want to play with it but I was just like all right well, it was one summer I was bored I was like all right so I logged on and I was like we have to battle people are like monsters and stuff like that in the game and and everybody it was like global so everybody could play it anybody could just join for fun you know it was free it was kind of like my maple story but it wasn't right. so um i met him over the summer and uh he didn't really spoke too much english but he could type so he started like talking to me and I just somehow got along with it. I was like, all right, well. Do you guy... remember like anything he said to you that made, that um, was like the intriguing no, attraction? No, he was just like, oh, um, hey, you know, like um, I always see you around this time of day, like always playing. Cause it was the summer I was right. bored. So I was like, all right, I would always sign up in at like three o'clock because I had like nothing to do okay. and that's when I like got off of work and stuff like that and I was like all right so I would log in and start playing around three o'clock and then um, yeah just somehow we just got along together very well mm. we started up conversations like things like how are you like every day he would like try to find me you know, in the game and try to interact with me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this guy doesn't seem too bad, you know? And um, at the time, I wasn't dating anybody. I was just like, you know, trying to trying to go to school, trying to do my work, do my thing. But, you know, apparently it didn't work out that way. So he messaged me and we were like back and forth like that, just always talking to each other. Um, like how how often do you guys were talking like like uh, four times a day or twice yeah a day we were like yeah we were night. like yeah all all night um, before he goes to sleep yeah stuff like that because time difference was always a problem so he would always try to catch me and I would always try to catch him mm -hmm. and you know when you're young you do dumb things so that was me and um, I you know I fell for him. And over the past few months, we were just like, all right, you know, he asked me to be his girlfriend, and then he came. Um, he would come back and forth just to visit me. So he actually came from yeah. Brazil mm -hmm. to yeah. the United States, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he was visiting you yeah. at first. Yeah. So, like, what is it that he said to you that made you have some type of infatuation um, with him? He was really funny at that time. He was funny. He was, uh, he would always like try to make me laugh, like not make me feel like I was alone because I was always an outcast growing up. So, and then like they the felt, sheet, huh? yeah, yeah. So it kind of made me feel like comfortable to talk to him. And he was always a quiet person. He was always quiet. Like he didn't, you know, he didn't say anything. Didn't, you know, yeah. Right. But, um, we ended up dating for six years, and I got engaged with him for two years out of that six. Time flew, and then, like, the time I know it, we were already, like, towards that point, you know. And he would always come back and forth from Brazil to here just to meet me. And um, I lived, it was, like, when I was, like, 23, 20, 22, 23 at that year, you know, I was over there to Brazil just to visit his whole family mm. just to see how his whole family's point of view was you know because they you know they were far and I was like all right might as well you know um, after I went there 
his whole family, his sister actually tried to like sabotage us. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. So she stole my journal, wrote that I cheated on him, and his whole family bought it and decided to lock me up, literally like lock me up in their backyard. So 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 let me just straight. So this was his sister. Yep, his sister. Comes in. Yep. Because she don't like you. Yep. Go she goes in write some nasty things yep. into your journal mm -hmm. and make it seem like yep. it was in, it was you that wrote yep. it but yep. any person with common sense would say well yep. hey the handwriting is different right right and everybody's handwriting is not the yeah. same yeah. yeah yeah like did he bought that did he believe it no or? he he actually no he didn't believe his sister he believed me he, yeah. he tried to save me but it was where the parents were just like no we're just gonna, we're just gonna believe your sister instead. Wow. So his sister was like spoiled rotten, yeah. and I was just like to the point where she would be blasting movies at 2 a.m. in the morning, bothering me, mm -hmm. and like Aggravate trying, you, huh? yeah, like trying to trigger me uh -huh. onto like wanting to not even want to be there, you know. Wow. So I was just like. Okay, this person must be really spoiled. She was like a spoiled brat because she didn't work. She just like, you know, she would sleep at, you know, at odd times, like in the morning. She didn't have a job. She didn't do nothing. She was just like there, you know, at all times, trying to like surveillance me. Mm. And uh, at that time, her, she would tell like her whole family, like, oh, Maggie did this and that, you know, and then they would like buy it and then lock me up and they would just be like, no, you know, and at the time, um, my ex, he was like, well, we still have to, tr like, he would try to sneak food for me and stuff like that, but. <laughs> Whoa, so you mean to tell me he was allowing his family right. to lock you up right? and he right. had to sneak food right. and all that. Right. Because he didn't want you to, to starve yeah. or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Because his whole family had the power to oh. do that to him. And so I just, I, I looked at him and I was like, well, this isn't love, you know, this isn't. Like he was a love slave or something. Yeah, like yeah, slave. yeah. And I didn't like that. I was just like, okay, well, I always should jump at it, you know. Right. But I was just like, all right, well, maybe maybe he will change in time, you know? So when I almost got married, I remember I was standing at the altar in my wedding dress and it started pouring rain. And I was just like, mm -mm, nope, I'm not gonna do it, you know? Right. So I, I tried getting away and I ran away from it. I ran away from it, but um, I, it was just, kind of tough because his whole family was just trying to stop me from it right. and so I was like you know um, I ran away from it and his uncle actually saved me took me in for a bit and was like okay well don't go back to that house you know and I was like well all my stuff are there so you know eventually they found me again yeah. and so I got locked up again and then his whole family decided, well, why not I just kill her, you know? You went to Brazil. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they start locking you up against your own will. Um, like, it happened like after three weeks I was staying there. Like, I was just like. Okay. So in the beginning you were staying there yeah. as a regular like, guest. Regular guest. And yeah, yeah. You, you and pretty much hung out, ate right. with them, mm -hmm. and yep. got and affiliated yep. with them. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, within after the three weeks. Yeah. His sister was just like. They start to hold you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And then um, I remember his whole family tried to kill me with glass cups. They would literally break the glass cups and just like cut my back. And it was not a good feeling because I was like, okay, well. So what? They held you down? Was you tied up? Or? Yeah, they, they locked me up and they would tie me up and just do that to me and it was it was really it was it was really like traumatizing you know 
Because there's um, nothing you can do. You fight yeah. it. And, and they would. And they just cut yeah. you. And yeah. Back so they, they did. They did. Um, they knocked up my ex's head first and then, like, do that to me. So I saw him getting tortured. And wow. I was like, that's your own son. You know, like, why would you do that to him? Uh, He's your blood. And so I was like, oh, I'm getting out. So I quickly looked for his phone and I called his uncle. I was like, you got to help me. I got to get out of here. And so they saw the mess that they did. Mm -hmm. And they tried to cover it up too. What? Yeah. And so they didn't cover up very well. His uncle was like, no, no, no. We're going to get you medical help and everything over here. Right. And so his uncle took me in oh. and booked me a flight right after and just go back to America. Don't come back here. I was like, I I really wish you the best. You know, like, mm-hmm. you're you're a nice person. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to see this happen to another girl. Right. They are crazy. You know, I just didn't know how crazy they were, right. you know. Um like especially how the sister was jealous of me and everything and I was just like, no, that's not cool, you know, you don't do something like that. Yeah. Like no matter how much you hate a person, you still shouldn't try to kill that person. Or do devious things to them. Yeah. Like Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it was it was horrible. Did you ever seek counseling or um after I came back, yeah, I was jobless for two whole years. I was anorexic, and I came back anorexic and was really traumatized by it. Mm-hmm. I was all skin and bones by the time my parents saw me, mm-hmm. and it broke my mom's heart. She was like, I can't believe someone would do this to my daughter, you right. know? Like, it was heartbreaking. Like, did they discover that you was missing because you was gone for so long? Yeah. Like, over three yeah. weeks? And yeah. How long, like, was you out there in Brazil? I know you was, I was, like, it was three weeks, but right. after three weeks, It was, like, 90 longer? days more. It was three months. Right. Damn. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. And you were supposed to be there for three weeks. Yep. Yep. But yeah. you wound up being there longer, so... Mm-hmm. Did um, your parents file like a missing persons report? No, or? they they tried to get in contact with me a lot of times, but it was just so bad connection over there, and they took everything of mine. Like I couldn't get to my parents, so I had to call like like his uncle, like oh can I borrow your phone or mm-hmm. like can I borrow this and that just so that I could connect to my parents. Right, and he. We're like sure do it but you have to do it secretly because they're just down the street and so yeah wow mm-hmm. the boyfriend being tortured as well right. as you was being tortured right like where was his mom or right. where was his dad at? the mom hated me and she would do anything to torture me uh-huh. to kill me to get rid of me she was the one who was doing the dirty work uh orchestrating yep. everything mm-hmm and her husband would be all for it. So basically the husband was supporting yep. the mama. Yep. So all, all along it's like it starts with the daughter, then it goes yep. from the daughter to, to the, the mama. mama. Mm-hmm. And it's like the father is supporting the mama yep. and the daughter. Yep. So it's like a 360 yep. mm-hmm. towards the son. Yep. Because yep. the son, basically they don't want the yep. son to be in a relationship with you. Yep. Because some women, when they go through yep. things like this, they don't want to affiliate themselves yep. with men. They don't want to interact with yep. men. Yep. They feel more secure if they're around other women. Right. I'm learning here that it wasn't just like the boyfriend doing right. these things. The boyfriend's yeah. being tortured right. along with you right. and it's the woman. Yeah. So like, how does that affect you with, with your level of trust? Um, it took me a while to overcome. Like I said, I was, I was two years, I was out of job. I was just focusing on doing the right thing. My parents wanted me to steer away from the whole online dating scene. So I I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to stay away from dating for a while. So two years I was single, and I just focused on working, finding a new job, mm-hmm. trying to better myself, because I didn't want to have that point where like you know like I just you know wanting to like 
not do anything with my own life, you know? There's got to be more than just this, you know? Right. Like, I was just thinking... Just to have trust issues. Right, yeah. Happen. So I was just like, you know, I'm just going to give it another try. What is the valuable lesson that you learned? I learned never this? to date someone in a third world country. Literally. Like, mm. literally, if they were from a third world country and, you know, I just say no. Like... You may be all nice, and you could come and visit. You know, I have friends all over the world, but, you know, I just won't date you. You know, I learned a lot of lesson, too. Like, that's, like, a huge number one. Like, yeah. I don't date someone that's... Yeah. Now, different. have this guy ever apologized to you for what his family did um, to you? Or? He did. He tried to look back at me, like, mm -hmm. um, after... Um, after my whole two year, I took a break. I didn't talk to him. He tried. He tried, like, contacting me on social media, but I just, like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk to you. And, I mean, I'm still friends with his cousins because his cousins were the one who actually saved me. Yeah, you saved your life. No, yeah. She got so, the mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's, like, millions of women from all over the world watching right. this, right? and what would you tell them? I would tell them... Be careful of your surroundings, literally. If the guy has a red flag, like a major red flag, like, oh, he's still staying with his parents or if he's still staying somewhere near his family, like, just get to know the family is like a number one plus. Take your time. Yeah, take your time. Don't rush into it. Like, don't rush into relationships. Don't just like fall in love because you got drunk or something. Right, you know? that heat like, of the moment. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't, don't get yeah. too infatuated right. because, yeah. because just because it feels so good right. or it looks so good. Right. Or everything that he's saying sounds so right. good. Right. You know, it's like, like don't be deceived by a guy's appearance and don't right. don't just like look that he's all that great and charming, you know? It's not about that. It's about his personality and what he actually does for you. You know, not what you do for him, but what he does for you. Right. Um, because after all that I felt like he didn't really love me. I felt that she was just infatuated too at the moment, young and dumb, like I said. And was um, doing everything that his parents was telling him. Right, right. And he got controlled was. by his whole family. Like, he was their puppet, just earning the money for them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it, it started to sound like to me, like, as if they used him to lure women in to right. bring them from different right. countries right. to torture them. Right, right. I sounded like that too, but I'm just like, you know, I'm so glad I'm not there anymore. Last time I spoke to his cousin, his cousin was telling me that he's dating this girl that was like 500 pounds heavier than he What the hell? Yeah, so I was like, okay, I guess he moved on to someone like that.